Well, welcome back everyone and uh, welcome to my router series of videos. This is going to be the first in a series of probably half a dozen or more um, short videos on using the router, purely using the router handheld. I'm not going to go cover the table, um, may do that in another series later on, but uh, certainly this series is going to be handheld routing um, and and also freehand routing as well probably. So um, I was asked to do, or I, I was thinking about doing, should I say, um, a series on routing, and I put it out on Keek, and with a lot of input from my friends on Keek, um, picked up a, a number of different topics to, uh, to cover. And um, one thing that came up was the basics of routing, and I thought I'd actually take that one, one little step um, further. So rather than this episode being Router 101, um, I'm actually going to do probably a Router 99 or possibly 100. So I'm actually going to assume you haven't even got a router. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is kind of what to look for um, if you're buying a, a router or things to consider if you're buying a replacement router. So um, I'll just get a few things organised here and uh, bring the camera in slightly closer and we'll crack on. Okay, so assuming you, um, you don't have a router and you're just looking into either getting a new router or getting a, your first router, um, several things to put into consideration when you're weighing up all the options. Because let's face it, they're like cars. There's so many different manufacturers to start with, um, let alone all the technical specs that go with all the individual models, even from just one manufacturer. So um, first thing I'm, I'm going to go into is the, the power rating. Now this is a small uh, router. It's an 850-watt um, router. So it's it's quite down the bottom of the range for um, in terms of power. I'm not sure what 850 works out in horsepower, but um, it's not a huge amount. Um, I do actually have another router which is in the table. That's a 2000 watt um, router. Um, it takes bigger bits and it can handle basically more work. So what are you going to be doing with it? Um, my advice would be to pick a router that does a little bit more than what you're looking to do at the moment, so you've got expandability because the versatility, of these, the versatility of these machines is so insane. Um, you'll soon find that you can pick the router up to do a job um, that you, you wouldn't necessarily have thought to uh, to do. So uh, the first thing is you know the, the power rating. The next thing is the speed. Um, the bigger the router. Um, the top speed tends to be slower, I've found. Um, this one's top speed is 32,000 RPM, whereas my big um, table router is only 20,000. And that kind of makes sense if you think about it, because it's going to be able to take bigger router bits, um, and because they're bigger, they want to be going slower. Um, rule of thumb is, just like, just like anything that's rotating really, um, the bigger the other thing rotating, the faster it's going to be. So let's try and get it to compensate for that. We slow down the output and it, it turns um, relative on the outside to, to a small bit. Um, so, um, you know, a variable speed router um, I find is much better than a fixed speed router because even if you've got only one size collet, um, say you picked up an eighth inch router bit or a three mil router bit and stuck it in a fixed speed router, that's going to be going effectively slower than if you put a three quarter inch or 19 mil um, cutter in the same machine. So obviously the, the diameter is bigger, it's got to travel further, it's effective speed. Um, so th this one here that I picked um, is actually a variable speed. It's got a little dial on the, uh, on the top there so you can slow it right down um, or speed it right up. And you'll find when you buy your cutters, the packaging that comes in, give you a, a maximum RPM. And this is a 25 mil cutter. Um, so it's saying for up to 25, 24,000 RPM. So a smaller cutter can go faster. Interestingly enough, um, it doesn't actually give me a speed on here. It's just a number that says min, 1 to 5, and then max. So it's basically got seven speeds. Um, now, that doesn't really relate to an RPM. So in the user manual, I, I didn't know this was uh, until I looked at it a few minutes ago, it actually gives me a relative um, RPM against the, the numbers. So for example, max 32,000 RPM, minimum 11,500 RPM. 
So that gives you a rough idea to match the speed of the, uh, the motor to the cutter you're using. Um, another thing I like is a switch on a router that you can turn on and leave on, turn off and leave off. Um, which is handy for a lot of operations in your when you're moving around. Some routers have like a trigger on the handle or something like that. Um, so if you have to let go of it to either hold a different part of the router or to, to manoeuvre it around something, it effectively turn off. So personally I like one that, um, that stays on and st or stays off. Um, so that's something to consider. Next thing is the, the plunge depth. Now Manufacturers will give you a depth of plunge. Usually, it's the depth of travel of the plunge base, um, assuming you're working with a plunge router. Um, but what's slightly more important, um, particularly if you're moving on to using templates, um, a guide bushes, or, um, or even this, the, the size of the, the cut on the individual router, is the, the effective depth of the, the cutter itself. So. Um, I don't actually know what the, the distance of plunge is on this, but if you can get the, um, the nuts to bottom out on the work, um, then, then all the better. And um, that's just a bonus because if you put another base on there or you're working on a template, um, you're going to lift that, you're going to lose the thicknesses in, um, in what you need. So the effective cup that you've got in your workpiece then becomes a lot, a lot smaller. So uh, basically, the more plunge, the better. Um, Another thing to consider is, and possibly the first thing to be honest, I mean I haven't been rattling these through in, in any particular order, is what size of collet. Um, if you're picking a small router, chances are it's going to be a quarter inch collet, um, which is you know, the, the diameter. Um, or if you've got a, in fact we'll use these two, these two are basically exactly the same cutter, um, they're actually slot cutters for, for cutting biscuits. Um, this is a half inch and this is a quarter inch. So they are, they are pretty much the, the standard. Um, certainly in Europe and possibly in the States as well now, um, there's a lot more metric um, cutters going in there. Um, so one thing to consider if you go for the smaller cutters, which would be on a quarter inch, um, rather than big heavy duty cutters, which would go on a half inch, is an eight millimeter. Now, there's only, between a quarter of an inch, which is 6.3 and a bit mil, um, and 8 millimetre, that's only a little bit more in diameter. But when you compare the two shanks together, there's actually quite a lot more purchase. So you've already got a, a, a bigger, harder bit that can handle a bit more work without the risk of it bending or being damaged or breaking or something like that. So personally, I, um, if you're going to go with a quarter inch, um, then try and get an 8mm collet for the, uh, the router. And the collets are basically um, like a little thimble with holes in it um, and a nut that screws in. Um, basically it's a chuck, so the, the collet fits over the, uh, the router and then, I don't know if you can see that, there's a taper, almost like a dovetail on the end, which fits into... Um, a corresponding taper in the router itself so as you tighten it up it closes the, the jaws and, and squeezes down on it so the tighter it is the tighter the, uh, the cutter is in there so that's something to consider do you want a really big are you going to be make, using big people always say it, panel raising bits um, but you can also get big straight bits you can also get big round over bits um, to put in a half inch router and you'll find when you look at the catalogues and the, the vast array of cutters available um, the smaller diameters um, or the smaller shank bits will only go up to a certain size of cutter um, whereas the half inch bits will usually only go down to a certain size and they, they kind of overlap um, in the middle somewhere so uh, that's, that's a consideration are you going to be using big bits or, uh, or little bits in terms of cutters and then also the aperture in the bottom of the um, base plate um, now if you're going to be using small cutters then you can go with a small aperture but if you find you're going to go with a table at the end of the day um, putting a big bit in I can't get a large radius cutter in a small aperture um, so if, you, if you've got a big aperture 
you were making small cuts, then the disadvantage is you find if you're going over the edge, it could fall through. But we can get round that and we'll show you in, um, in later video how to make a new base for this with a smaller aperture, almost like a, a, zero, in, a zero clearance insert. So the hole in the aperture is only just big enough for the, uh, the cuts to go through. So it helps stop it tilting. Um, and also the compatibility with other manufacturers. Some manufacturers need their own guide bushes and accessories to fit their kit. Uh, other manufacturers give you the option to be able to expand your armoury of, um, of add-ons so you can use their, their kit as well as the, the manufacturer as well. So think compatibility with, um, with others. One company that I use um, an awful lot for certainly the guide bushes and some of my cutters, they're very good a bit at providing add-ons so their kit will work with other manufacturers' um, stuff as well. Um, and then probably lastly, um, or, or lastly but, but one, is think extraction. When you're hand routing, it's very messy. It's very noisy, um, but it's very messy as well. So uh, usually they come with some kind of attachment which, uh, which sort of fits fits in that you can attach a, a hose to on a, on a vat to sort of clean out the dust um, because it literally does uh, does get everywhere. Um, so that's another another concern. How how, um, how good is the extraction on the uh, on the router? Um, and then also safety. And um, some people would have said that first, but at the end of the day, you are taking a motor and spinning a very sharp implement um, much faster than than a big table saw blade. Um, and I have in the past had an accident where I basically wasn't concentrating. I didn't tighten up the, uh, the collet quite tight enough and a bit jumped out. Um, and because it's spinning that way, the cutter could have gone anywhere. Fortunately, it went away from me. But uh, I do now think twice about how tight I've... Um, and double check everything. So I think safety as well um, with the router. So that's a good... Uh, a good start. Things to, to bear in mind if you're looking to replace your uh, your router, and also maybe to think back at do those features fit with with the router I've got, and, and what do I need to, to take it a step further. So hopefully that isn't too much waffle from me. Um, it gives you something to think about. So uh, this video I'm going to cover collet care, cutter care, um, and then very basic um, cuts for. Uh, for beginners. See you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe.